Hey guys, Colin from Battle Systems here. This is the tutorial video for Core Space Firstborn, and actually, really, it's it's going to cover the uh, the terrain and the cardboard that comes within this uh, big set here. So, if you haven't already, make sure that you watch the Essential Quick Start Guide that'll cover original Core Space and this Core Space. Um, very short video. Once you've seen that, then you can dive straight in and uh, assemble it up with me. So the sheets we're going to be covering here are uh, the wall sheets, of which there are two of these. And what these are going to do, these are basically going to uh, be all of these different types of walls that you're going to get. I'm not showing you all of them, there's just a selection of the different types of walls. There's big ones, small ones, and so on and so forth. Um, and they will all just sort of clip together, so here's an example. Um, and these are going to be actually making your 3D terrain, and you're going to use these little clips here, and you can see here that they just slot in and clip in very simply and easily. Okay, so we've got those sheets which are gonna cover those. Uh, and there's, uh, uh, the, you, you actually get three of this in, 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 in a set, and you get two of this sheet in a set, and that'll be all your walls and struts and lovely bits and pieces. Then we've also got um, this sheet here. Now this is gonna cover things like these cool little uh, arcs, um, which you can store your uh, equipment in and you'll find lots of cool things. Things like these with the uh, the removable fire, these exhausts. You've got your um, little sleep chambers here, um, which you can orientate various different ways. Uh, and the ends come off of those so, so that you can search those and pillars and some other bits and pieces that we're not obviously uh, showing you here. Um, and so, uh, and, in, and in the set you should have two sheets of this one. Uh, and that will give you enough to furnish your entire set. And lastly, you'll have um, one of these sheets here as well, which is going to uh, cover um, some unique stuff that you only get one of, things like um, this little uh, Dyson reactor, which you can kind of open up and fuel up, and um, uh, a little uh, uh, sort of stasis pod for the, uh, the tree born to come out. Now, if you've got the uh, Core Space Firstborn starter game, obviously it's not just terrain, you're gonna get some of these sheets here as well. Um, so we've got character boards and class boards and activation counters and equipment and um, you know uh, various other bits and pieces. You've got even more equipment, Firstborn um, uh, equipment and so on and so forth. Uh, nano equipment, standard large items, new spawn points for drones and again, you know, more more character boards, um, hostility tracker, search counters, so on and so forth. And it really is just a case of popping these items out and their various little sections. Um, these are laminated uh, both sides so that dry white markers can be used on uh, many of them as well. And it also gives the, uh, the little counters here a real kind of plasticky feel as well, which makes it you know, um, we use that special high density uh, compressed board with the lamination as well. It comes out almost plasticky, which is great. It feels like you've got plastic components um, for counters. So, um, so yeah, obviously if you've got some of those uh, sheets as well, um, there's no assembly required, uh, but just thought I'd point out that, uh, you know, you are obviously gonna have um, all of these bits and pieces as well to come out. So let's, uh, let's start with the walls first, because that's definitely the easiest. Um, and as usual, I've got a couple of things ready. I've got a cutting mat over here, just in case I need to uh, help releasing anything. Um, and I've got my little side cutters in case I've got a slot uh, that I want to actually uh, make a little bigger. Um, and I've also got some glue here because you've got some options on, on these little cargo, uh, these little uh, arcs to actually allow you to uh, glue some extra uh, pieces on the bottom um, of the lids and things. Uh, to make them more sturdy and then you can glue bases in as well if you want to. Okay, so let me pop out a sheet of walls uh, to show you uh, what you get. Okay, so here's your um, your walls. You've got some one, two, three, four, five standard walls. These are just basic, nothing going on there. Um, and again, a half wall uh, version and uh, a quarter wall version, new to the firstborn uh, set. And then you've got these walls here, which have got um, these push out parts here, which are the doors. So I'll pop those out. 
Um, obviously don't chuck the doors away because there will be certain missions where you'll be like, okay, this door needs to be in place and you need to open it or it'll be locked or something. Um, so you've um, you've got uh, those here. You also notice you've got some uh, struts here. There's like a vine strut uh, and uh, just like a, a more um, crafted strut. Um, and these basically fit onto your walls via, um, you've got four large slots here. Uh, top and bottom and uh, uh, left and right but also on the top on the bottom of the walls you've got these slightly thinner uh, uh, slots and that's where these these guys go in here and you can make uh, it makes the walls a lot more interesting you can make corridors you know with the struts either side um, and as an example you've got here one that's more of a kind of you know vine work some sort of loose vines and things hanging down you've also got here um, uh, what we call a scatter um, so this is just like a, a little bit of vine that you can just vine work you can just put onto the the map floor and some little um, kind of bits of broken rock that you can put onto the map floor as well it just adds a little bit of extra 3d detail um, you don't need to use the struts um, uh, when you're uh, assembling your walls you don't need to use the struts to actually uh, play the game but um, I suggest putting them all on because it really helps the immersion of it plus when you're playing it adds things like cover as well uh, additional cover uh, should I say um, and then basically all you do like I said before is you're basically going to use the clips to you know clip these walls together um, and inside uh, your rule books whether it's original core space or whether it's uh, firstborn you will find that you have um, maps like this one here um, and uh, there's a key in the book as well and it shows you exactly where to put and which angle to put the walls at um, which type of walls you're using and even where to put all the you know the little you know bits of scatter and uh, so on and so forth so um, yeah uh, as far as the, the the first sheet's concerned that's the wall sheet uh, now the second one I'm going to show you, and I'll pop that out as well, is basically just more of the same, uh, with the exception of a strut and a pillar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, I'm going to just uh, pop that out now quickly for you. Okay, and there you have it. Um, that took a long time to pop out uh, all the bits and pieces. There's a lot of um, really intricate parts uh, around uh, these uh, uh, vine work areas. Um, so, you know, if you're kind of struggling to pop some of those bits out, you can always, you know, have a craft knife or something handy to just, just to help. Um, and um, yeah, so we've got all of these bits and pieces here. Now, first thing, we've got a pillar at the bottom. There's also pillars on the other sheet I'm going to show you in a moment. So I'm going to remove those pillar parts and uh, show you how to do those in a bit. Um, and then, you know, uh, you'll notice here there's a lot more struts on this particular uh, set, even more cover. So again, when you're putting the struts on, uh, follow the map, set the map up with all the things that are supposed to connect to the walls and all the scatter, etc. Then when it's all done and you've got the map um, set up as per the book, then add the uh, struts uh, to taste, as it were. Um, and it will make a big difference, as it were. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so you've got more walls, um, more viney ones. These ones don't have doors. You've got this wall that's got a little secret hidden door on it. That's supposed to be um, kind of left in for most games. Um, and uh, the only thing that we've got unique else, unique on here, is um, is these little, uh, they're kind of like um, vine uh, girders, if you like, sort of archways. Um, and what these are for, um, you'll find in the map, is that um, you'll, you'll see that they've got one, <clears throat> one little clip here for the top of the wall, and then on here they've got a clip at the top, and they've also got a little notch at the bottom. So whenever you secure those, if you've got two walls, like you've got a corridor here, and you've got two walls that you need to connect, you make sure that you... Uh, pop the top in here first uh, and then slot that into the bottom so you can see the little tab pops out the bottom there and then um, once you've done that you can connect to the other side and that keeps it nice and sturdy and you can imagine having lots of corridors and things with these kind of uh, things like that um, if you're doing your own ones as well you can always pop those upside down if you wanted something a bit weird and you know stuff kind of um, coming up, uh, coming up at you, uh, uh, as it were. You could, you, you, you could do kind of, you know, stuff like that as well. Okay, so that's um, that's the 
that's basically the wall sheets um, that you'd then, you know, clip, clip everything together. And again, you've got some more scatter on here. So this scatter will, um, you know, I would keep all that in a baggie um, and then you can kind of add that for your, you know, some of your big missions at the end. You, you really want it atmospheric, you can kind of sprinkle that stuff around. Um, okay, I'll remove this uh, and I'll get on and show you some of the scatter items. And actually, I did forget to talk to you about um, these uh, counters here as well. These are actually lock counters. Sometimes in the game, you'll have a situation where a door will be in place. Um, and, um, you know, if, if, there's, if it's just in place like that, you walk up, spend an effortless action to open the door, pop it out and so on. Sometimes, though, it will say the door's locked. These are what these are for. Um, and you basically can pop those into those little top slots, uh, slots at the top there. Uh, and that will indicate that the door is basically locked. So you'd have to do whatever mission objective it is to uh, release that and then boom, you can um, unlock or open the door uh, as normal. So we've got some of those counters on there. They're really cool for using uh, in certain missions. Um, yep, so that's that. So of the two scatter sheets, I think what we'll do, we'll start with this one. Um, this has got the kind of the most variety of items on it. Uh, this is the one that you'll get two of. Um, so I'm going to um, pop these out and speak to you about them one at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make uh, the little uh, 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 arcs, which are basically kind of the alien uh, cargoes, uh, cargo areas that you'll be searching. So I'm going to pop out uh, uh, the cargo crate and um, we'll, uh, we'll build one. Okay, you can see here, I've popped a line out um, and I've popped uh, some of these little tops and bottoms. The, the, the lid is the larger area, yellow on both sides. Then you've got one of these, which is red on the inside and uh, sort of gold yellow. And then you've got this one, which is red on both sides. Okay, um, so first of all, we'll pop those to one side. We're just gonna slot these together and you can see here, that you've got slots up and down uh, and you can literally just pop these together. Obviously you need to be careful and you need to support the different areas, some thin parts here, um, and uh, uh, we'll just do that. Okay, and you end up with this little structure like that, <coughs> uh, which is really, really cool. So what we need to do in here then is we need to um, uh, yeah, pop the base in. So the base is the one that's got the red on the inside, because this, 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 this arc is red on the inside, so the insert tunnel, uh, turn, uh, tunnel textures are uh, red. So that's going to go in there. We'll pop this to one side and then this is the lid. So um, we're going we're gonna to look underneath and where you've, I'm just going to give that a little bit of a squeeze inwards and you can see which way you've got a bit of a squeeze to create a little bit of tension. Then I'm going to pop this in red side up um, at the top and then as I push it down it's going to stay in place just under the tension where I've just kind of squeezed it in a little bit at the bottom. Now, obviously what I would suggest is that you'd um, just pop a little bit of glue uh, around the back. You're not gonna to wanna to take these apart. So you can pop a little bit of glue in the bottom first uh, to glue that in and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but what we'll do, once you've got this little thing set up, then the lid, which is this larger piece, should just slot into there and it fits in the little X's of this little bit here and that doesn't go anywhere. Okay, but like I've done on this one, it's nice to have that kind of extra little lip on the bottom, which I like to put in. So um, what you would do with that, uh, and that's ready to go. But we're going to glue the base in, like I said, to make it a little bit more sturdy. And then what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to, I'm going to just glue that on top of there, right in the middle, to create that nice little lip. Um, so I'm going to do that quickly for you now. Bom, 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 bom. And this is where. Bring the little mat in. Whoops. Okay. Uh, the brush on this is not great, um, and, and I'm using um, I'm using a uh, I, I always use this one. Um, no affiliation. This is a Loctite, but it's liquid is the important thing. Um, and I just run 
uh, this will do this backwards. I just run a little bit of glue here, here. I like to use this glue because it um, dries very quickly. Um, and I'm incredibly impatient. Okay, pop that back on there. And then we're still gonna do exactly the same as what we did before. We're just gonna layer that in at the bottom. Of course, the difference is, is when it gets to the bottom this time, uh, do, 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 get that like that. That looks pretty level to me. Uh, give that a little bit of a squeeze to make sure we've got some contact. That's dry. Okay, got my finger stuck to it. Um, and then underneath the lid here, I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue in the middle, and I really just want to dob like that because it will spread out. Um, and I'm just going to drop this in. Uh, there's a stamp side and a reverse side to this. On all sheets, you get kind of a stamp side and a reverse side. So um, the stamp side is where you can clearly see the cuts. They're kind of deep, it makes it rounded. The reverse side, it's very difficult to see where the cuts and the bleed end. So I'm gonna stick this uh, reverse side down, so stamp side up, and it makes a kind of a, a nice kind of um, angled chamfer, whatever, um, which eases it into the cargo crate, which is great. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna drop that the best I can into the middle. And that actually just sits nice and flush inside there and it's got this nice little lip. Um, also gives you the option to put it up this way, you know, if you wanted to mark a particular uh, arc as a searchable area, you can do that. And a special objective or something, you can switch it over. But otherwise, that's all dry. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically an arc. Now you'll see that there's another one on here. So, and there's two of these sheets. So you're gonna get four of those arcs in, in total, which is cool. Right, let me move this out of the way. Okay, so what have we got next? Uh, let's do an exhaust. You can see here there's uh, this exhaust here. So I'm gonna pop these bits out. Okay, so here's the exhaust, um, and um, there's various, you know, sides and bits and pieces. Um, we've got the fire, which we'll uh, do in a second, and this is the top. So with this one, what we're gonna do, we've got two kind of outside edges, oh sorry, four outside ed edges and two inside. So the inside ones are quite small like this, and the outside edges are larger, and it's just like the, uh, the little arcs, we've got slots on the bottom of some and slots on the top. So it's pretty simple to figure out which way it goes around. So I'll pop those together. And again, when you're uh, assembling this, you've got a stamp side and a reverse side. It's always really good to get the, the stamp side, the rounded uh, cuts of all of these facing outwards. So these are symmetrical. So you get them all facing outwards and it gives everything a, a really nice kind of tooled look, um, certainly uh, on this scale anyway. Um, and then this bit here, again, we've got a slot at the top and the bottom, just pop that in there like that. Um, and then we line this up and drop it in. Is that lined up? It's nearly lined up. Wow, oh, that's it. Okay, and there you've got this exhaust. Uh, and then finally, you've got this little piece here, which is um, re reversible. Okay, um, uh, so you've got one with like a, a fiery kind of bubbling underneath and one off. You could use that for certain objectives. So don't glue that in. I mean, there's no need to glue it in anyway, because it's uh, quite a tight fit. So you've got like that, and again, you might have some exhausts that are never gonna fire up if you've got lots of them, and you could literally just pop that out reverse it round and, uh, and mark it. So when you're making your own missions and things like that, which is kind of cool. Um, and finally, you've just got this uh, fire here, which has got a very simple slot, um, quite a long slot, so it's kind of tight. Again, I'm gonna use the table, pop that down to there, lovely. Uh, and that goes in there. Okay, so oh, make sure that's all down. Exhaust fired up, exhaust not fired up. Very, very simple. Um, and again, this uh, this fire is one area that really benefits from, if you've got like a kid's felt tip pen and you can add a bit of yellow and red to the to the edges, um, just look at the difference it makes on that fire. Absolutely fantastic. And it takes like seconds, absolutely seconds. And of course you can find pens to match, you know, as per the quick start guide, you can find pens and everything to match all these uh, different bits and pieces, which is really cool. Okay, so that's the exhaust. What else have we got on here? Uh, let's do this pillar. 
Uh, if you remember, we had a pillar that was, uh, you know, on the wall sheet. Um, this is the same pillar, basically the same tooling. So I'll pop that out. There it is, nice and simple. Um, and again, just like the, the, the little arcs and the exhaust, you'll notice there's slots on the bottom and slots on the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that together in that particular way, uh, do that now. There we go. Um, and again, I've used the tooling where I've, um, I've used the, uh, the stamp side out on this. Um, <clears throat> and actually, if you ever wanted to see exactly where the stamp size was, and not that you couldn't see this anyway, you've got a little cut symbol on one side, this little scalpel symbol, <coughs> to tell you which is the stamp side. You, you really can tell, though, when it's in your hands. So last but not least, well, actually, that's the pillar. That's the pillar done, really. But last but not least, um, you've got this um, little top piece um, option that you can use uh, to stick on there. Um, and that's really nice. Now, you could just put that on a bit of blue tack or something, but of course, you're not going to take these apart, these particular bits apart. So you might as well um, uh, pop a bit of glue here. Uh, and in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do stamp side down. So reverse side up because it makes a nice little, it's, I'm being very, very uh, pinnicky here, but it, it makes a nice little chamfer up. And then I'm going to go stamp side uh, up on this one. Stamp side down, then stamp side up. And it makes that nice little curve. Uh, and I'm just going to really quickly uh, glue that on now. There you go, and that's that. That's that done. Um, and again, if you wanted to pen that, you could do that. You could pen that first, and then um, put the um, put those up, um, which is uh, really really cool. Um, and actually, um, I've said um, on this one, I put it stamp side down, and then stamp side up. But I've noticed on this pillar, um, I've actually done it uh, stamp side down, stamp side down. I think I prefer that one. It's even more, you know, it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm being, you know, really kind of ultra focused in here. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's your pillar basically. And you've got this nice recess on here now that you can use to kind of, you know, if this was an objective counter, you can mark objective counters. There's some great missions where you know, your objective is to go and interact with a pillar and collect objectives from each one, you know, shut down particular uh, cool things uh, within a map. Okay, uh, so that's that. Let's move that to, uh, to one side. What have we got left? On this sheet, I think the only thing we've got left is this big, um, or these big uh, sleep chambers. So you're gonna get two of these on, so if I pop one side of that out, you're gonna get two of these on this sheet, which means you're, you're gonna get four of those in total, which is great. Uh, I'm just gonna pop out enough to make one now. Okay, so here are the parts for the sleep chamber. I think I've got everything. Um, <clears throat> these bits have been popped out of here um, and they're actually gonna be combined with these um, in order for you to kind of make your um, sleep chamber, um, as it were, uh, kind of lid ends. Um, and then what's new on this, well not new, but uh, you know, so far to this video new, is you'll see that this one has got a lot of half cuts and that's what you're gonna do to kind of make your, um, you know, your cylinder as it were. Uh, so I'm gonna pop those to one side. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully kind of just start to bend this round. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, and I've bent that round. Do take your time. Um, uh, and I've bent that round. Some of them are uh, more uh, kind of stiffer than others, but take your time to get a nice kind of cylinder look. Um, and then you'll see here that these are going to slot into here. Okay, so a little bit of an overlap there. We can pop that out like so. And then that makes it a tighter fit. Okay, so you could do that. And you've got one of those at one end, and one of those at the other end. Um, and so what you're gonna do is, uh, you've got two of these, and again, I'm gonna put them stamp side facing out, uh, for extra coolness, uh, and then I'm going to just slot those into here on both sides. You 
can really get your finger in there and kind of hold this two sides here to, to help push those home. So that's nice and sturdy. Got a little bit of movement here. Now, um, if you want, you can glue that into place if you wanted to do that. Um, I haven't with mine. I've kind of just left them loose um, and I've got no problem with that. They're certainly going to stay there, not going to fall out. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make our lids at the end. Uh, and basically what we're going to do with that is we are going to just glue down um, these. And again, I've got stamp side facing, whoops, I've got stamp side facing down, okay? Um, and then what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna try two different things. I've got stamp, face, stamp side facing down both of these. Then I'm gonna put um, stamp, uh, stamp side facing up on that one, and I'm gonna put stamp side facing down on that one. Let's see if it affects the how it kind of clips in at the end. Um, so I'm gonna glue both of those down now. Okay, so why that dries. What I'm interested in here is, um, I wanna see is that because because this one is uh, stamp side facing up, it's nice and rounded, looks really cool. Um, this one being uh, stamp uh, side down, it kind of curves out and goes a little bit wider at the base here. Um, so I'm wondering if this, is, this, this might be a better fit. Let's have a look, um, doing it on the fly, on the tutorial video. So uh, I'm gonna pop this one in the end. Well, that's perfectly fine. Um, that's cool. And then this one, that's fine as well. Um, does it make a difference? Possibly, I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, let's try these around the other side. It might be that side slightly tighter. Let's have a look. Ah, yes. Oops. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, I think it makes I think it makes a little bit of a difference. So I would go for the um, stamp side facing um, stamp side facing down on this inner piece, um, so that you, so that uh, as it comes off of its base, it actually rounds out and you get like a, a larger kind of friction area. Um, that's really cool. I mean, I didn't do it. I did it stamp side facing down on my one, um, and I'm perfectly fine. Sometimes they fall off a bit, but. It's um, only when they're in the box, not, not in game, which is great. So um, yeah, that's the sleep chamber. I think these um, look really, really good, um, uh, of course. Um, and actually on that sheet there, that is everything that I can see. We've got obviously another sleep chamber and another arc, but we don't need to watch me do those again. So I'm gonna pop that down there. So the only thing we've got left now is um, the, uh, the items on here, uh, the, and you only get one sheet of this. So uh, I'm gonna do something really easy now. I'm gonna pop out these worm counters. Don't even need to speed this bit up, I don't think. Okay, um, yeah, and these are your worm counters for um, uh, the game. I start the game like this, and then obviously once the worm comes out, it creates a hole. Well, it will do once you get rid of the worm, there'll be a hole left there. Okay, nothing to assemble on those. So what should we do first? I'm gonna do, let's do uh, the command console. So I'm gonna drop this out here. In this top power here, there's this tiny little stone here. You can just leave that in if you like, but um, it actually has got a cut on it. Um, it's just really small, I can't get it out. So I'm gonna use these to just poke it out a bit. Okay, so here's the part for your little uh, command console, um, which uh, I've got in here somewhere. Is this little fella here. And you can see here, you can put the little stone in here. It also comes with these little kind of activation ruin stones. And these are, you know, can be collected in mission um, and put in here to activate various different things around the base. Uh, the more stones you can get into there, the more you can manipulate the base uh, against itself as it were. So, 
Um, so on this bit here, uh, a bit like the uh, sleep chamber, you've got some half cuts on here, which you're just going to uh, bend around. Whenever you're bending these, you know, keep the pressure on at the bend so that you uh, don't get any, you know, delamination or anything. And then you've got this little bit here, which is gonna slot in at the front like that. And I'm gonna slot that in all the way up at the moment. I might slot it down a bit to help me get this bit in. Um, and so what you've got here, you've got this little uh, little tabs at the top of this um, shape here. Um, and we're gonna make sure the little round one is at the top here. Um, and in order to make this work, I'm just gonna drop that back down again a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm gonna slot it in the top and I'm going to just ease that little bottom tab here through here. I'm gonna line the top one up with this top area. I'm just gonna slide this carefully back up. And this little tab at the top shouldn't be poking out particularly. Um, it, it just sort of, you can see here, it just rests across the top. Uh, and that's perfectly fine because this is gonna go in over the top here. Um, and you can make sure it fits first like that. And that fits over the top of there like that. Uh, again, you can glue that down if you want. It's not gonna come out, but you can glue that down. Uh, and finally, um, you've got this little kind of piece of vine work that comes at the side and you'll see there's a little slot here and that goes on here um, and that also stops that from coming out. But again, you know, if you want that permanent thing, you can you, you can glue that in there. And then of course you've got space now to, whoops, whee, you've got space to pop in your, your little uh, crystal on the top to activate whatever thingy, majiggity, doodah happens. Uh, and there's space here to get up to four of these little activation stones. And these activation stones will um, uh, will be placed in these every time you uh, search one of those. You'll find some equipment, an activation stone, and depending on where the hostility is, some kind of liege as well, possibly. Um, okay, and so that's that's your little, um, that's your little uh, uh, command console thingy. Um, what have we got left? Let's ramp up the difficulty. Let's go for the um, the big Dyson reactor. So I'm gonna pop those parts out. Okay, so here's a Dyson reactor. First thing to remember, if you've popped all of this stuff out before you've actually assembled each of it, make sure you don't get this top part here mixed up with the tops of the pillars it is absolutely a different size um, and that'll be too late if you've already glued it on the top somewhere um, I would suggest actually putting these together one at a time as I've done it and popping if you pop everything off the sheets in one go it's gonna you know have a real mess now you then got an option with this okay so option one is to ignore those you can see here there's some tooling to pop these out don't pop them out and you can just assemble it and it's good to go option two is to add a little bit of and this is just an aesthetic, is to add a little bit of detail and sort of depth to the, 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 the power of all this energy that's going on inside. Okay, so I'm gonna ignore those for a minute and I'm gonna slot these together. Uh, and really, just like the cargo crates, you've got this, uh, and the, sorry, the arcs um, and the exhaust, you've got this, you know, top slot, bottom slot, and I'm gonna pop myself around. Now, before I do that as well, I'm also gonna have a look at the reverse side of these because we've got uh, two half cuts here, okay? The top one, uh, it's gonna be quite difficult. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a bend out, just a little bit to make a little bit of a lip. And then this one, I'm gonna bend back fully and then back again. Uh, now that's done, I'm just going to uh, basically slot this together. And because it's at an angle, it's a bit, of, a bit, it's a little bit more difficult. It's not just a straight down thing, you have to kind of ease them in, so I'm gonna do that. And I've adjusted these slots a little bit wider so that goes together a little bit easier. And you'll find the last wall that you push in actually kind of uh, creates the shape. And then what you end up with you end up with this um, kind of shape here, uh, and then you can close that, and if you let go, it starts to open again, which is what this is for, uh, and that will go on uh, across the top like that, 
And you'll notice when it's closed up, it's not an exact square. It's kind of a bit of a rectangle. So you match up the kind of a bit of a rectangle at the top of that. And you squash that in like that. And that should go like that. And because you create a tiny little bit of a lip on the top, that stays in there really nicely. Make sure that this is down properly. Um, and there you go, you've got your Dyson reactor. Now, like I said, you have got an option if you want to, to pop these bits out here. And if you're gonna do that, you can put these to one side and then you can use these bits here. Now, again, you've got a couple of options. The first thing you can do is you can just take that and glue it on the inside like that. And that will give you a little bit of depth. So it looks like this is countersunk back. The energy is really inside. Um, and then if you do it that way, what you can do is then you could then put that over the top of here and that would create even more depth. So there's option one and that creates this nice kind of uh, depth to, uh, to, to that uh, kind of energy source. Option two um, is to actually um, turn this round. So we've got stamp side facing inside. You can then glue that in there. And if you're careful, it'll, it'll create a nice little step. So it goes down in a little bit and down uh, and you glue that in there. And then once you've got that glued in, you can actually just uh, do that, which creates even more depth in the other way. Um, and that's what I've done here on this Dyson reactor. I've kind of created this, this kind of depth to this. Um, and I just think that looks a little bit more alien, but you can have kind of a bit more of a, an external kind of heavier feel like that, if you so desire. Um, and uh, yeah, and in order to do that, I would probably just, um, you know, pop pop one of these out again, or pop, pop these out on either side. Uh, and I'll do just one side and I'll, and I'll just glue that down. So I've got like a lot of area to play around with. I'm not restricted trying to glue inside. So I'll do that really quickly. And then you can see I've glued that in, I rushed it a bit, it's not perfectly lined up, but it's um, I've glued that basically in there um, and I've got this nice countersunk kind of effect to that. Again, you don't have to do that, that's just, you know, adding, I like to give options, you know, if, you're, if you just want quick setup and you're not really bothered about it, um, you can just leave them in or just punch them out and just leave a hole or whatever, perfectly, perfectly fine, but this is just a nice little option to do that. So, pop that to one side, what have we got left? Well, not a lot really. So um, we're going to create uh, the, uh, this little fella here, which is uh, where the Trueborn sleep chamber, and you can see it's got lots of lovely detail in, inside. And there's, a, there's actually a little uh, door piece just here that kind of um, sits on there as well in game. And then, you know, it might appear sometimes. And then, and then what will happen is at least you know where the uh, Trueborn's going to spawn from. And then at some point on his uh, hostility track or maybe event card, it releases and the uh, the the uh, uh, sleepy trueborn will step out. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to pop out the parts uh, for that. Okay, <clears throat> so I was going to say this is the last item on there, uh, but actually you'll notice there's because uh, I had a bit of space which I couldn't fit anything else on. Uh, we have an extra quarter wall on there. Um, uh, no assembly required. So I'll pop that over there. So you've got four of those in the set in total now. Okay, so back to this uh, Trueborn chamber. Um, this is this is certainly the most complex one because you just need to make sure that you get the right sides on the right side because not only is this chamber um, kind of uh, got some slanty walls and things and stuff on it like that. It's also designed at a kind of an angle so it looks like it's jutted out of the ground sort of randomly at a bit of an angle and then boom, out comes the, uh, the true bomb. Um, and because of those angles, it's a little bit more complex in its, uh, in its assembly. So you've got to make sure you get the right sides on the right side, as it were. Okay, so first of all, you've got some gubbins inside. That's these little tiny chair parts and the little brace. Um, I'm going to focus, I think I need to do it in this order, on the um, on, on these bits. So I'm going to, I'm going to pop a little, anywhere you can see a little, little bit of a bend in there, I'm going to give that a little bend, uh, and the bends are all going inwards, so I can, it won't bend that much, I'm going to over bend it, 
so that when I assemble it, the pressure's holding it in. Um, this just needs a slight bend because it's actually the door, so you don't need to overbend that. It's going to go on there. Uh, and then again up here, I've got a bend, um, and I'm just going to overbend it slightly, so I've got some pressure. And I'm going to overbend it slightly, so I've got some pressure. Um, and then I think I'm going to assemble the back, and then before I put this bit on the front, I need to assemble this little chair piece inside because I can see that when I slot this on the front here, oops, I'm actually I'm actually going to cover up access to this little side slot. So I can see here that I definitely need to get my chair in first. But so first of all, I'm going to take um, the uh, the the back, okay, um, and we've got a we've got a left and a right. On the right and the left, I guess, uh, depending on which way you're looking at this video. Uh, you can see here that one of them's slightly bigger, got a lot more volume down the bottom here. Uh, this one's got less. So where this is leaning this way, I'm going to want less volume at the bottom. So I'm going to pop that like that, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to drop this up here like so. And then you can see these two edges are meeting because I kind of overbent them slightly, which is just perfect. Sometimes it's not quite right; you need just to, just adjust it a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to take the side with more volume, where it's leaning away from, bend that in a little bit, um, and then you've got that there. Now, once you've got this assembled, you can absolutely just run a little bit of glue in there to hold that in place uh, if you want to. As you can see here, uh, it's not necessary, um, uh, but it's, uh, it's there. And you can already see we've got this angled piece here. Now... Like I say, before I put this on, I'm going to want access. Um, I'm going to uh, want access in there. So I've got this chair part here, um, and it, you can see it's got a bend in it. And the front of this chair is going to drop down and be hidden behind here. Uh, and these two tabs at the side are going to slot into here. But there's also a little hole at the back to locate that chair uh, piece as well, and that'll stop that. That'll keep it all in place, basically, stop it from sliding around. So I'm going to pop that into there, and at the same time. Okay, like that. Excellent. Okay, nice solid little chair in there now. Now at this point, to keep this nice and sturdy, I'm going to want to put this on the front, which I'm doing this backwards, but let's just turn it around because I can't see what I'm doing. Slot that in there. Do, do, do. Make sure that chair's not in the way. There you go, pop that down. This now becomes incredibly rigid. rigid. Um, and you can see that I can already just put that on there, which is really cool. Um, oh, right, okay, so, yeah, this is the first mistake. I'm going to drop that back out again. Before I put the front of that on, I'm also going to want to locate uh, the two armrests, I've just noticed. So with this, uh, again, stamp side out, stamp side out, if, 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 if the super minute uh, aesthetics matter. And I'll, you can see there's a slot in either side of the chair, so I'm going to pop those in. Yeah, I remember this now. I'm going to pop that in there. Like that, that's it. So we've got the two sides of the, uh, the rest of the chair in. Then I'm going to pop this on the front. I know I'm right this time. Gonna be right eventually, one day. Okay, there you go. Now I've got it. And the last thing is we've got this little kind of brace here, which is kind of a the bit that would I, I guess would hold the uh, sleepy true ball, some amulet true ball all in its um in its place. Okay, uh, and there you go. Uh, and the last thing then is to just uh, have this, which pops on there. And um, yeah, that's the, uh, that's that. So yeah, lots of different really cool uh, bits of scatter and you've got walls and you've got pillars and you've got all sorts of different things. But that, that is, the, the the main contents of your um, of your uh, your alien catacombs terrain, uh, which you can you know you might have bought as a just as a terrain set, or uh, comes as standard in the core space firstborn. Uh, start again. Okay, guys, hope that was a useful video for you, and uh, yeah, uh, enjoy it and happy gaming.